Okay, I think it's time to uh, get started. So welcome to our February 2018 What's New and What's Next. I'm Dermot from the Customer Success Team. Uh, I'm here to take you through some of the upcoming developments in Me Too. And uh, with me, I've got Matt Kelly, Me Too's Product Manager, who's going to be doing uh, the vast majority uh, of the stuff today. Um, hopefully, you can, hopefully, you can all see the joining instructions. Um, as always with these sessions, we really want you to interact with us. Uh, to ask your questions and uh, also to respond to a puzzle too as well. So please make sure you've got access to our MeToo meeting. So download the native app if you haven't already or go to web.meetoo.com and our meeting ID for today's session is 135043629 and we will have those instructions uh, on pretty much all of our slides as well. And I can see we've got quite a few people uh, joining us on the uh, GoToWebinar today and, and not quite so many on me too. So please do take a moment to uh, make sure you get on there. Uh, Matt's going to be looking at um, you know some of the things that are coming up right now in Me Too and some of the things that you'll you'll see soon. And we want your feedback on all those things, uh, and we want your ideas uh, for future sessions and also future developments of Me Too. So please do uh, make sure that you get involved with that. Okay, a simple agenda as always with these uh, sessions. We're going to look at what's new. Um, so actually, uh, in a change to the normal proceedings on this session, actually the update to me too is happening tomorrow. So Matt's going to be going through some uh, some of the practical things that have changed or that are changing uh, tomorrow in the update. So it's a bit more of a, a show and tell uh, than you, you uh, perhaps participating in, uh, in some of the actual new features. Um, and then, again, as always, we'll go on to what's next. And actually, we're, uh, Matt's going to be looking at some of the things that are in the short and medium term of the Meteor Roadmap. Uh, so there are definitely some, some features and changes that you can expect to see very soon. Uh, and again, that's why we really want you to get onto this Meteor meeting uh, to give us your feedback on that and, and some other ideas as well. So you can see at the bottom of our slide, web.meetoo.com, and then the meeting ID there as well. And before I hand over to Matt, I just want to kick off uh, with a poll. So just trying to get an idea of um, you know the type of people that we're getting onto these sessions uh, and to, to see uh, what repeat visitors we have for these what's new and what's next sessions. Uh, we want to make sure that they're as useful as possible and we really want uh, you all to be uh, coming back every time uh, to watch them and participate. So is it your first one? Uh, yes, no, you've attended one before or you've attended a few of these sessions. And we can clearly see we've got some seasoned me tours here because everybody has responded to the poll already, or at least most of you have. Okay, we'll take the result there. And wow, okay, so a lot of uh, new people here. Uh, and um, you know, only 20% have attended a few. Well, it's great to see that um, you know we've got so many new people on here. Hopefully, this is going to be a really useful session uh, to you. Uh, and please, you know, as part of uh, you know the Q&A board uh, on the app, please give us your feedback on the session as well. It'd be really useful. And towards the end of the session, we'll be uh, unlocking a survey on Me Too, uh, and we'd really like for you to uh, respond to those questions to help us uh, actually improve uh, all of these. What's new? What's next? Well, okay, then I'd like to hand over to Matt to, to take you through what's uh, new. Uh, thank you, Dermot. So we've got a couple of things to go through today. Um, firstly, in the what's new, we have a new question type. So that's our star rating question type. Uh, and then also we've got quite a few dashboard changes to go through. So we've, we've altered um, a few bits of the UI. And it all warrants uh, just going through so people are aware of it. So if you'll just bear with me for one moment, I will bring up a dashboard. Uh, and so on the left-hand side of my screen, hopefully you're seeing a Me Too dashboard. And on the right-hand side of the screen is a web app, um, which we can hopefully follow along with <coughs> to see the new features in there. Now, the first thing to address is a dashboard change. So. One of the things we've done is streamlined the meeting creation process. So we try to make things as simple as possible uh, in Me Too. And one of the bits of feedback we have had previously is that the, the meeting creation process can be a little bit confusing or perhaps overwhelming. So what I'm going to do now is just create a new meeting. So when I click New there, hopefully uh, many of you have used Me Too uh, lots before. We'll see the immediate change. Previously, we had a lot of meeting setup options that came up here. 
So we've taken all those away uh, and they are all included inside the actual meeting itself now. So in the meeting creation, all we actually have to do is give a name. Uh, I'm just going to call this webinar demo and I will add that. Um, just please bear with me if there is a little glitch here. We are working in a, uh, a test environment. So there we go. So this, as, as Dermot said, this stuff uh, will be coming to the uh, to the production environment. So for all of you to use tomorrow. Um, but at the moment, we're still just in a, uh, a testing environment. Just just to jump on that, Matt. Just to make sure, please don't try and join the, any of these meetings that Matt uh, Matt is creating here because uh, you won't be able to. Quite right. Thank you, Dermot. Yeah. Um, so I've just created that meeting very quickly and easily. You see all I did there was enter in the meeting name. Now, one thing you may notice, we've just got this anonymous uh, icon next to the meeting name. That's just to signify one of the small little changes we've done. Uh, so now when you create a meeting, um, by default, they will be set to uh, anonymous. Um, so if I click and go into the meeting, now once inside the meeting, uh, I will just let you have a quick look at that dashboard whilst I just copy that meeting ID and join it in the app on the right hand side of the screen there. I'll start that meeting. Um, now, if we just continue with the, uh, the settings that I was talking about before, so uh, if we click on the settings tab now, uh, we'll see all those options that were previously in the meeting creation. So we've got the settings like whether you want to identify people with the profiles on or off. Uh, as I said, the default setting is now to be off. Uh, we also have the meeting schedule, so you can set uh, start and end times uh, to your meeting if you so wish, uh, just for the information purposes of yourself and your participants. Uh, and then at the bottom there, we have our ad organizers section. So this is only relevant to you if you have um, multiple people uh, as part of your account as dashboard users. Um, you can share any meeting you create with another person uh, within your uh, organization or institution. Uh, so that's just a brief rundown of the settings. So they are now all contained within the settings section and not at the meeting uh, creation screen. Uh, now, if I step back just to touch upon a couple of the other changes. Now, this is a very subtle one. Uh, some of you may have noticed, um, but the poll section is now at the top. So when you first enter a meeting, the first thing you will see is the poll section. Now, previously, uh, that used to go to the messaging section. Um, but one of the things that we've gathered through feedback and through our data of, of, of usage of our dashboards, obviously polling is the the primary use of Me Too, so we thought we'd actually reflect that in the way people use it and take you directly to the polling section uh, when you join uh, one of these meetings. Um, now just another subtle one, if I move down, obviously I mentioned that messaging was at the top before, now it's uh, here and you will notice it's now called Q&A. Um, there's nothing else has actually changed with this feature. It's still the same feature that you that you had before. We've just altered the name of it to Q&A to hopefully be a bit more indicative of what the future what the feature is more commonly used as. Um, and hopefully that will reflect on how we uh, enhance that section of, of the dashboard in the future, basing it around sort of Q&A. Uh, as I step down, uh, we've got surveys, obviously nothing's changed there. Customize is the same settings we've just covered. Uh, we've still got the data tab, so that's where you go to download uh, your uh, results at the end of one of your sessions. And then at the very bottom there, we've got audience display. Now, again, another very subtle one. Previously, that was called uh, projector. Now, the word projector didn't really translate, I think, to many people, and we found that a lot of people weren't particularly using that feature, um, perhaps because they didn't really understand what it meant by the word projector. And we've changed that to audience display. So just a quick recap for, for you all, that audience display is a way to, uh, you can launch that. So I'll just very quickly launch it now. You can set up a display. I'm just going to uh, use the default settings. Uh, and you can push this to a screen, send it out to a, you know, a projector or another uh, TV screen in your room so people can follow the meeting from there if they're not looking at it on their mobile devices. 
Um, I'll just close that again, back to my meeting. Uh, I think that pretty much covers most of the uh, most of the changes. Now there are a couple of other subtle ones. The eagle eyed ones among you might notice that some of the icons have, have subtly changed, um, but that pretty much covers most of the uh, the dashboard changes. Um, now what I will do is move on to uh, the new question type we have. So if I go into here and create a new poll. Um, I'm just going to quickly enter in a new question. Please write this session. Um, so I've just entered a question title in there. Now the type of question, you will notice we have an extra one here now called rating. So if I click on the rating question, it's a very simple, very straightforward question type. All you really have to do is specify you know, what the question is, what it is you want to rate, and then it's just a default one to five rating scale. Now, you know, there's no need to specify what one star means or what five star means. I think it's a pretty uh, internationally recognized scale, you know, used in, in, in many kind of online review platforms and, and things like that. Um, so that, in a nutshell, is the question type. Uh, I will just add that so we can see that's come up. Now what I will do is open the poll so we can see on the right hand side of my screen uh, what that looks like. Now we have a couple of people here voting just so you can visualize that. I'm going to vote for three stars on this uh, app on the right. So we can see as per normal the results coming in. Now the bars are vertical bars here uh, showing the results. And the other thing just to point out is we have the average response also appended there. So that's obviously just the, uh, the average response of the, the cumulative total of votes. Now, I will close that vote and push the results. So then on the app view here, you can see what those re results will look like on a, uh, on a mobile display. So we can see, obviously, it's got five stars the most voted for one, uh, and the average response is 4.14. And that, in a nutshell, is the uh, is the live uh, the live polling instance of the rating uh, question type. Now, what I will just very quickly do is if I go to the survey section, just to show you, we can also do this in the survey. Now, rather than just create a new survey, I've already got one made up. So I'm just going to import this in. So here's my survey. Let's just have a check, that's the right one. So I'm just gonna import this five question survey. Uh, and I will start that. Now, if I just on the right, and side, go over to my web app and click on the survey. We can see what the uh, the rating poll looks like in the in the survey instance. So again, you know, each question is split out onto its own line. So I'm just going to give a few of these a bit of a rating here, uh, and then you know, below we can just see a couple of the other question types we have, uh, and obviously our text response question as well. Uh, so that's just how the rating question fits in with the survey uh, and, and how it looks there. So hopefully you'll agree it's very straightforward, very simple. Um, and that is that. There is just one thing I will show you actually very quickly. If I just stop that survey, uh, if I go to my data tab, sorry, the last section uh, I haven't talked about, uh, I'll just download a report and just while that's loading, Matt, um, there's one quick question in regard to the star rating question. There's a few that we can come on to, but one just about the audience display, because that was obviously something that you just mentioned as well. Yes. Uh, so what was the question? Uh, does it Jake's work? Asked, does yeah. the star rating question work with the... So it absolutely does work with the audience display. I, will, uh, I'll, I can show that to you very quickly in a moment. Um, let me just go to the report here. So on the polling summary, we can just see the... Uh, how, that, how, how the star rating question appears there. So we can see I had seven respondents, uh, again, the percentages in there and the average at the bottom. Uh, similar story when I look at the survey as well. So obviously there's my survey and it breaks them all down. Um, so that's just to show it in the Excel report. Uh, let me just close that. And just very quickly, 
I'll bring up my uh, audience display. And if I just go back to that poll that I ran, so I'll just push those results out. Now, if I just look at my audience display, so this is obviously what the audience display looks like. Again, you can see comparing the left and the right, very similar to how it appears in the, uh, in the app as well. Um, now, that pretty much covers most of the new features. There is one other smaller one, which I just want to quickly touch upon, but it probably won't affect most of you on this webinar. Uh, and that is we've refreshed our sort of getting started tutorial. So when you very first sign up for a MeToo account, um, just to find your feet and, and, and get used to, to how it all works, uh, we do have a new getting started tutorial. Now, for the majority of you, you'll have already gone through that process, but just uh, so you know, in case you ever did want to access it, if you click the uh, question mark in the top here and click on training, uh, we have this getting started with the dashboard and what that does, that kicks off our brand new tutorial. So like I said, the majority of you perhaps won't be too relevant, but maybe if you've got a colleague or you're trying to show this to somebody else, uh, you can click through this simple tutorial and it'll give you a very, uh, a very quick um, view of how to create your first poll. So I won't go through that now. Um, and I think that covers off all of the what's new bits. Um, let me just... Perfect. Uh, thanks very much for that, Matt. So they're the, uh, the elements that are going to be appearing in your Me Too account uh, tomorrow morning. Um, so please, you know, have a look through those and, of course, give us, uh, give us your feedback on those as you start to play with the new features. Um, I just want to take this as another opportunity to remind you to send in your questions. We've got some great stuff coming in already. Um, some, some will actually get covered off in uh, Matt's next section. Um, but equally, I want to uh, encourage you to you know, send your questions and your feedback on the things that Matt has just presented now, but also with regards to this, what's next? Everything that we do in Me Too, we do based on our customers' feedback. So what we really want is for you to you know, comment and give us feedback on the stuff that Matt's going to talk about now, but also just give us, uh, give us your ideas on what you'd like to, to see me too, and we can certainly uh, work with those. And you know, uh, quite often we've uh, ended up contacting people after these sessions to actually get a bit more uh, uh, detail on, on their ideas. So please uh, get them all coming in now. I'll hand back to Matt again. I guess. <laughs> Thanks, Dermot. And so, yeah, onto onto a couple of things that we're currently working on now. One of the points that was that was raised on the last one of these webinars that we did. Um, people would like to see a bit more of the sort of screenshots or you know mock-ups of, of of some of the things that are coming up. And previously, we just sort of talked to a couple of bullet points. Now, luckily, uh, I've got a couple of things here where I am able to uh, just quickly show you a little bit more detail of what we're talking about. Um, the first one, which I will just bring my uh, dashboard back for uh, is, and I think we discussed this last time around about something that's coming next, and we now have it available in a sort of a beta format, is the uh, logon process with uh, using your Microsoft account. So what I'm just going to quickly do here is log out of this dashboard. Now, hopefully the uh, eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that this login screen is ever so slightly different. We have a button down here now saying login with Microsoft. Now, I'm not going to go through all of this in, in great detail, but basically my account now, I've, I've linked it up with my Microsoft account. So rather than entering in my username and password to access the dashboard, uh, I can just press the login with Microsoft button. Now, what that will do, that takes me to the Microsoft portal. Now, as you can see, I'm on a machine here that's actually used by uh, quite a few people, um, but I just want to select the account that I want to sign in with, the one that's actually linked to my MeToo account. Now, I'm already signed in with this account, so when I click on that button, it will automatically log me into my dashboard. And here I am. Um, hopefully, that'll just give you a bit of an idea of what we're talking about when we talk about uh, sort of Microsoft SSO uh, single sign-on. Um, but we, we we currently have this, or we this 
as of tomorrow, this will be available as a beta for any people who, who are perhaps interested in trying it out. Uh, it's still not quite ready for us to, to release fully yet. There's a, there's a few things we still need to iron out. Um, but if anybody is interested, uh, please do get in touch with us, and we'd be more than happy to discuss this in, uh, in a bit more detail and how it could uh, impact you and your organization or college or university. Um, just to move on quickly, one of the things that sort of follows on from that is uh, that's kind of preventing us at the moment rolling out that single sign-on is our PowerPoint add-in. So obviously many of you know we have a PowerPoint add-in where all our, our sort of functionality for polling works as well. Um, in order to get our Microsoft sign-in uh, released properly, we also just need to make sure that's possible to do in the PowerPoint add-in. So we're currently working on that. Um, in addition to that, we're also uh, going to be bringing into the PowerPoint add-in sort of parity with some of the other features in our dashboard. So we will be bringing in the open text poll uh, and also the rating poll uh, that we've just discussed there. So those currently aren't available uh, in the PowerPoint add-in, but we are working on those and we will hopefully have those out very soon. Um, and then there's one more thing which I just wanted to go through as a something else that we're working on. Um, let me bring up another dashboard. Uh, and again, bear with me just to stress this is still a, uh, a work in progress, but this is something, oh, wrong one. This is something that we are currently um, working on, but it's more for the app user uh, rather than the uh, dashboard user. So please bear with me. I'm uh, having to do this off my actual phone itself uh, rather than the web app because we are in a, as I said before, a test environment. So I've just opened up a meeting on my device here. Uh, we can see on the left-hand side of the screen on my dashboard, I've got lots of uh, polls. And what I want to discuss is the minimize poll. Now, this is something that we, in the meetings that we run internally here, have come across before. Um, we've also seen it uh, when we go to, to events uh, and things that use me too and in, and in other meeting rooms. Um, and that's when you are, uh, when the dashboard user sends a poll out. So we can see here we've got a poll. I can vote on it. Now, it might be a case of, uh, you know, the the person who's operating the dashboard, the presenter, might want to leave this poll open for five or 10 minutes. Uh, it might be a case that they have put the results up and they're you know, preoccupied with uh, the rest of, of what they have to do, like running a meeting or addressing, uh, addressing other points, and they might forget to, to take the poll away. Um, what this minimized poll feature does is puts a bit of power back into the hands of the user. So. If we look up here in the top right, we have a little uh, minimize down arrow. Uh, so if I just press that button, we can see as the app user, that has now gone down. Uh, what I can do as the app user is continue to go to other areas of the app. So I can go to my messaging. I can send a message through if I want. Uh, let's just pop that in. Um, I can go to the surveys, I can carry on completing a survey if I was in the middle of doing a survey. But we can see down here at the bottom of the screen, I've still got the current state of that poll. Now, just coming back to the dashboard user, if I were to close that poll, we can see on the app that, that the state of that poll has been moved to closed. Uh, the dashboard user might then push the results. We can see again that that has uh, been moved to showing the results. Again, as the app user, I can just say, oh, the results are ready. I'll bring that up just to see what those results were. Um, and then you might want to minimize that again, move on and carry on interacting with the rest of the app. Now, just the last point I think to bring up about that, if as the, uh, as a, as the presenter, the dashboard user, you move on to a new poll, um, that will then as usual, automatically come in the face of the app user again. So they're not actually missing out on any polls. If they come, they will still be put at the forefront of the screen. But once that uh, once that person has, has dealt with it, they can minimize it down and carry on with the rest of the vote.
so that's just something we're working on at the moment. That's we've we've had quite a bit of feedback, I think, about that sort of already. We've been uh, look, looking at doing this for a while, so it's great to see uh, to see that actually working at the moment. Um, and I think just looking at the time, that sort of brings us <laughs> getting close. I just wanted to, to make a point. So even when you uh, when you minimise the power, it's important that obviously if somebody can you know, re-maximise it and change their response if they want to, they can still fully uh, interact with that pole. Absolutely, yeah. So we can see I've minimised it here. I can bring it up, change my mind because the vote is still open um, and bring it down until somebody um, closes the poll. Obviously, as before, when the poll is closed, you can no longer interact with it. Cool. We've got quite a few questions. Yes, I think, that that probably, something else no, I think that probably brings us to the end of that bit. And uh, yeah, let's get on to the Q&A to see uh, okay. what we so what I'll do, I've been having a look through. Somebody's uh, managed to do a, a, a funny joke there, but we'll, we'll skip past it. So um, I think you've already answered the one from Amy about uh, the plans for the PowerPoint add-in. So that's great news. It's something, you know, we've been getting a lot of feedback from people from that they want to see the PowerPoint add-in um, upgraded uh, with the, the rest of the feature set. And just to make the point that the um, with the minimised poll, Matt was obviously running those polls through the dashboard. You know, if you as the, um, the host was running those questions, those polls through your PowerPoint add-in, people would be able to minimise that as well. So that's that's absolutely fine. Uh, there's some really good feedback coming through, but in the interest of time, I'll just uh, kind of jump over this. Um, there's a lot about the PowerPoint add-in. The star rating work with the audience display from Jake. Yep, we uh, had a look at that. Uh, any plans to allow more than five stars? Nice. Um, not currently. I mean, if that turns into something that people desperately want to have, to have more than five stars, then then absolutely, we, we could we could look into that. I think our main sort of uh, drive with this feature was just to make it as simple as possible. And the, the one to five scale is a very sort of uh, universally recognized one. Now, what this, what this does sort of bring for us is, you know, it's a, essentially it's a one to five scale, perhaps in the future, Maybe rather than doing a five, uh, sorry, a ten-star uh, rating question, we might expand it into a different question type that's more of a, a numeric range, where you can perhaps set your own minimum and maximums uh, to have it a little bit more versatile. Um, but at the moment, it's just five star. But yeah, if uh, if you want it more, please send in your requests, and uh, if we, if we get enough demand for it, then yeah, absolutely. This is potentially one to, to think about. Uh, is there any way to set the time for a survey or polls so that 10 minutes uh, given for a survey and after 10 minutes it automatically closes? Uh, we don't have that at the moment. Um, I mean, our survey function, uh, sorry, our survey functionality is sort of quite, we like to say, relatively basic. You know, it's not got the whole fully fledged sort of ideas of uh, what we call sort of survey routing where you know, if you answer a certain thing to one question, it will present a different question to you. We've kept our survey functionality very basic, um, and that includes things like timed surveys. Now, again, you know, if that's something that that, that people sort of want and, and and feel is necessary, then we can look into it. Um, at the moment, it's not something I don't think that's had a lot of uh, feedback. Although I do remember it being mentioned once before. But okay. Well, we can we can certainly explore that uh, individually. Uh, Cynthia's uh, asked the question: Any chance you might upgrade the graphic design of the summary to be in keeping with the tutorial style? I think that's potentially something that we probably want to go back to Cynthia about uh, directly, perhaps after this. Yes. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure what was meant by summary there. But yeah, we we can yeah. we can clarify that one. Um, hi, uh, this is from Donna. It's a good question. Uh, is there any planned update to include text options on polls such as? Italics or bold? Um, not currently, no. I guess that goes back to yeah. If somebody's sending in a text message, if they want to bold something or or change the font, uh, we haven't considered anything like that at the moment. Um, I'm not sure if if on a an actual text question we would necessarily look into that, but perhaps. For the for the Q and A board, that might be something that's more relevant for the Q and A board. If you want to actually call something out, um, yeah, it's not something we've we've looked at at the moment, but okay. good suggestion. Um, Holly's got a, a question here. I guess about the licensing. Uh, is star rating question included in free accounts? So the star rating question is available uh, to all. Uh, well, 
Uh, sorry, I <laughs> try that again. The star rating question is not available for free education accounts. Uh, it's available to all other account types. Now, the free education accounts, uh, those of you that have them, you have uh, some other slight benefits over uh, over the other free accounts, but for uh, yeah, for the free education account, it's not there. You'll have to upgrade, but for all other accounts, it's uh, available. So for the one to ten free account, correct? It's yeah. certainly there. Um, is there any way to remove the surveys icon on the app if I'm not using surveys? That's from Jules. Uh, at present, there isn't. Um, we've had a couple of, of, of requests in for that. Um, you know, I, I very much get the idea that that's from a you know using this in the sort of events environment where mm -hmm. you want to perhaps take away uh, some of the functionality that's not being used. Uh, um, but yeah, that's that is a good suggestion. That is something that we have sort of talked about and considered. Um, it's not there at the moment, but yeah, I think that's certainly something we could look into. I guess because the the Q and A feature does that. So yeah. Yeah. Enough, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Uh, is minimising a polar feature in this release? Uh, it is not in this release. That's. Uh, so part of the, the what's next feature, uh, sorry, um, part of the, the presentation we did today. So that's something we are still working on. So that won't be released uh, tomorrow when we do our update. Um, but it is, yeah, it's something that we're just still currently work, working on and uh, more about that when we, uh, when we actually do release it. Sure. Uh, Rebecca's uh, got a question there. Does the word cloud feature show responses live or do you need to push the poll through after all responses have entered the text? Uh, it doesn't show it live, so the 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 yeah the word cloud question is a uh, you know at the end of the question you sort of close the poll, it takes all of those results, and then you push through the word cloud. Um, Pedro, hi, I like these updates, which is great. When is scoring coming? Lecturers ask me so often. Also for quizzes, this is a big question, Matt. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it's that is it's an interesting one. So we haven't we haven't really focused too much on, on quizzes at the moment. I mean, as hopefully you know, we've got the correct answer feature, so we've got the ability to um, to set a correct answer, and that's reflected in the reports uh, to see you know whether or people were to show you whether people got the correct answer or not. Um, we haven't got scoring in there for or quizzes. Uh, it's something that a few people have, have mentioned to us uh, a few times. Uh, it's, it's never been one that's so far um, been as sort of important above some of the other features that we've that we've looked at. But um, we certainly do see a case for it. Uh, and I, you know, it is something that we will address, I think, at some point. Um, we can't give a uh, yeah a, a sort of a, a date or a time on that, but yeah, we are aware that, that people do want quizzes. So yeah, that's good. Um, and then uh, Dustin, sorry, I took that off screen. We we had a I had a typo on my slide there. I had the wrong meeting ID. So apologies for that, everybody. The correct meeting ID is at the bottom there. Um, thanks, Jules, for sending it in. Um, Dustin's got a, a really good point here, and it's got quite a lot of likes. Um, question for polls or surveys in general. Will there be multiple rooms at one time? We run events with several parallel workshops and would like to gather feedback uh, when they end uh, most likely and most likely happens at the same time. Uh, yeah, that's something we've we've discussed before. I think it's something we we talked about on a now I think it was last year, so towards the end of, of the summer last year, we held a um, uh, sort of a future forum uh, webinar, uh, and we, we we put those sort of theories and ideas forward. Then uh, it got it got a bit of, well mixed reception, I think, from depending on people's backgrounds and, and what people use me to for. Um, I do think, uh, yeah, I do think it certainly fits a lot of uh, a lot of cases of, of using me to where you have kind of breakout rooms or multiple sessions going at the same time. So I guess that's the kind of the idea that you can have polling happening at the same time in different rooms or message boards going on, um, all held under that same sort of one meeting ID. Uh, obviously, the way around that at the moment is to have multiple different meeting IDs to, to manage it. But yeah, that is uh, that is something, again, that's on the sort of uh, the longer term roadmap, I would probably suggest. Yeah. 
stuff. And so please, Dustin, uh, you know, get in touch with us uh, directly. Um, hello at me2.com is a great way to, to send things in and we can get a dialogue going on how you think uh, that should probably uh, start to look. Okay, we've gone uh, way over time, which is great because we've had lots of questions in and some really good ideas in there as well that we'll be certainly taking away uh, and having uh, a bit of a look at. Um, you might have noticed we've unlocked the survey uh, in the Me Too meeting ID that's there at the bottom of the screen. So please do give us your feedback on this session. Uh, it's really, really useful. Um, also, I just want to uh, have a quick look uh, at a slide here. Uh, talking about some upcoming webinars. So we run these sessions uh, very regularly. We've also got uh, a session coming up in March um, with regards to essential venue technology tips. And so we've got Kevin McLaughlin uh, from One Wimpole Street in RSM. He's going to be talking about how to choose the right venue for your next event, you know, particularly around uh, tech and Wi-Fi uh, and all those sort of considerations that uh, uh, many uh, event organisers, uh, you know, really struggle with. So please, I've posted out the, the link to our webinars page. So head to that webinars page uh, and register for that session. And then another thing, please, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. This uh, recording will be going up on there along with all our other recordings. And we really appreciate it if you could uh, do that, uh, as well as um, leave us a Trustpilot review. So those of you that are regular uh, Me Too users, um, we'd really, really like to get a, a nice review or even a constructive review from you. So please just do that. And I'm just posting that uh, that link out now as well. Okay, I think we're, we're well and truly over. Thank you very much, Matt, for all your time. If you've got any other questions, please keep sending them in. Uh, and uh, Matt, I'm sure we'll sit down and go through with some responses and we will get them out uh, to everybody uh, post this session. Thanks very much, and we'll see you again on the next one.